guys, today I've got some clean tones I want to share with you. Some people say I look a little like Mr. Clean. These are tones that I created with the Line 6 Pod Go. Now, a lot of you know, if you've been watching my recent videos, I've been putting more content out there, uh, sharing some of my live solo gigs and my setup and that sort of thing. Well, this is part of my recent setup for my live solo gigs, so I wanted to create some tones that were going to uh, give me what I needed for these particular gigs, and I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, at the end of the video and I got some other stuff I want to share with you as well so hang around for that but right now we're gonna dive deep into the settings here and you'll hear some more tones as well all right so we're in the pod go edit interface here uh, now it's a little bit easier to show you on screen than it probably is to show you on the actual unit itself one thing I'll say before we dig into this and this will be a, this will be a quick like snapshot here uh, it's pretty easy to edit on either one it's actually pretty easy to edit on the actual podgo unit so I just want to make that point um, so we're starting out with well I've got two tones I want to share with you and they're, they're really similar to one another so we'll start out with my clean rhythm as you can see on screen uh, this is called the US double Vib. Now both tones are the same amp. You'll see why I have two though. Well, you can probably see it on the screen. I've got one rhythm, one lead, but I'll, I'll get into that and get into the differences there. So this is the US double Vib, which obviously that's based on the Fender uh, dual reverb amp. So it's going to sound like this. <laughs> nice clean tone there uh, now you can see my settings what I would recommend I don't have these uploaded anywhere and I don't plan to I just I never do that so if you want to take a screenshot uh, take a screenshot of my settings right now there's nothing outrageous on here though uh, and I built these patches from scratch I'm not a big fan of taking a tone that's exist that exists already like a default tone the default setting or even someone else's setting uh, I like to build my patches from scratch I'll explain more about why I do that at the end of this video here uh, but yeah I just I prefer to build it from scratch so we've got the US double bib uh, again take a screenshot of my settings if you want nothing outrageous now the drive of course is four uh, is at four so with uh, with an aggressive attack you'll get a little bit of grit on there okay let's see if I can do that just kind of be careful with that uh, you know with this amp or this particular amp model here with the line six pod go um, you can see again my settings here again take a screenshot guys if you want to take a screenshot of this uh, there's nothing too special going on here my bass is straight up and down I've got the mids boosted a little trebles boosted a hair the presence is cut a little um, channel volume you want to make sure that your channel volume um, you know you want to make sure you're not clipping so that could be your input volume channel volume just make sure that you're not clipping on these particular amp sims the clean amplifiers here um, sometimes it's kind of difficult to get that balance to where you can hear the sound clearly right uh, and where it's clipping so just you know kind of be careful with that with your channel volume there so where you can really get I'll, I'll touch on my effects here too where you can really get into tone shaping is the cabs now I I am sticking with the 212 double C12 whatever and, and that's just the default cab that comes with it I have tried other cabs. I'll show you what these look like here. Um, you know, you've got some other cabs. You could use the 112 Princess if you want. So again, this is our sound that we have now. If I were to switch to, let's say, uh, let's try this 212 Jazz cabinet here. Actually, that sounds pretty cool. Um, and then you've got like a 212 Silver Bell. I don't remember what all these are modeled. I think that Jazz one's modeled off uh, the Roland Jazz Chorus Amp. You got a 212 Blue Bell. And I mean, you've got several cabs you can, you can choose from here. Let's see what this Match G25 sounds like real quick. Um, real 
real quick on the cabs too, I want to share this with you. Uh, another huge, uh, huge feature here or, or big way you can get different tones is of course your mics. I've got the 121 ribbon. This was uh, set up by default. <laughs> Good old SM57 though. You can hear the difference in you know in those two mics there. And you've got several. I won't go through them all, but this just gives you an array of settings, you know, or an, or an array of tones. Okay, so pretty cool. That's kind of my basic uh, setup there. Real quick, I have got, I don't have anything in front of this amp, by the way. Um, you know, you can throw in a looper there. I actually use an external looper. I'll talk more about that at the end of the video as well, why I use the external looper as opposed to using the Pod Go looper. I do have a chorus that I have it off as, you know, if I'm going to click over to this patch, it's off, but I'll share what that sounds like. I like to play what I have and then I'll click on, click on the course, you can hear the difference. All right, let's turn it on. sound there but I usually play with that off and I'll just click it on uh, when I'm on stage so um, next up I've got a reverb a little bit of reverb turned on here and I've got some delay so with that said that is my rhythm tone uh, that I play with on stage when I'm doing my solo gigs here now I want to quickly share my clean lead tone uh, that I play along with this and what I normally do I mentioned I use a looper an external looper pedal and again I'll share why I use uh, an external looper as opposed to the looper in the Podgo. That looper works just fine, by the way, but again, we'll, we'll get to that later. So the clean lead is really exactly the same. And what I'll do is I'll loop a rhythm with the, with the clean rhythm. So once I've got that loop recorded and that's playing, I'll switch over to this here, this clean lead. And this just gives me two things, a little bit of boost and volume, just a tiny bit. As you can see, it's the same exact amp. The settings, you know, down the pipe here are relatively the same. There's not, there's not hardly any difference at all. I got the drive, like, uh, instead of four, at 4.4 here. So not a big difference. The biggest difference on here is I've got a little bit more delay. And I also, in front of the amp here, I also have... Um, a, a three band compressor here and what this does it just kind of helps those notes hold out just a little bit kind of gives it that little bit of punch that I need to kind of cut through <laughs> Not too much, but just a hair. Uh, now, I did have the, um, I've been playing with this, uh, what would be the fourth position for the pickups, which is, and this is my Ibanez RG1570, my Prestige RG1570. Uh, I use this on stage when I'm playing my solo gigs. This is my primary guitar. I love it because it just gives me a lot of options. You guys probably caught the video where I changed these pickups out. And, and like a month later, I had them changed back to the stock pickups. I'll throw that up here if you guys want to check that out. But and you probably think that was interesting. Like, Jason, why did you change it and then change it back? And just watch that video and <laughs> I'll tell you all about it. Now I'm gonna share a clip of me playing these tones live. So you're gonna catch that at the end of the video. Uh, but I promised you a couple of things first. Number one, uh, I told you that I feel like it's best to create these patches from scratch. I mean, there's nothing wrong with going to the default settings and, you know, and, and changing things around the way you like it. Add this, add that, you know, adjust the EQ. 
Uh, but my reason for creating patches from scratch is because one, you're going to learn that device very well, very fast. Yeah, it might be a little frustrating at first, and I'm actually going to be making a video on how to create uh, a Line 6 Pod Go patch from scratch. I did not mean to rhyme, but anyway, I'm gonna make that video at some point soon. But it's really quite simple. You create the patch, you put whatever amp you want in there, and it's gonna come with all the default stuff like the cabin mic anyway. So, I mean, as soon as you add that amp, <laughs> poof, you've got like stuff there. But you can add in effects and just make changes along the way uh, that cater to what you're looking for. So again, I just feel like it's best to create these things from scratch. I don't even download other people's patches. Uh, I've actually downloaded one patch for this thing and it was for acoustic because I was struggling getting a good acoustic sound out of this. There are no acoustic amps in the pod go, not at this moment anyway. So I actually found something online uh, and I'll, I'll share that in a different video as well. I'll, I'll be making some more pod go content because again, it's primarily what I use for uh, playing my live solo gigs, which leads me to my next thing I want to talk to you about is my live solo gig. So one thing I want to know is if you guys want to see more content for these live solo gigs, please let me know in the comment section because I normally post metal guitar, primarily metal stuff on here and some rock and you know anything related to that, which I will always do. I'm never going to stray from that, so don't worry. But I know a lot of you have, have you know commented saying, hey, you know, I like this live stuff, even though you're doing acoustic and playing more clean stuff. So yeah, I'd like to know more about that. And the reason I ask is because I really encourage you guys to get out there and play live even if you do this as a hobby you know start playing in front of people it's so rewarding and it's so fun and it really kind of pushes you to to get to that next level a lot faster now real quick another thing before you see the live clip here uh, another thing I want to mention is I do not use the looper in the pod go and that's not really related to the clean tones uh, but I know I mentioned that earlier in the video the reason why is it's a little bit easier for me to have another looper pedal to use so that I can just click the looper pedal, record that loop, you know, and, and have that loop going. And then I can change patches, like from my rhythm to my lead, really easy on the pod go, and there we go. No pun intended. Anyway, <laughs> if I were to use the pod go looper, well, that pod go looper is actually used as an effect within the pod go. So that would mean to to record that loop, okay, I can do that with the pedal, but if I want to if I want to play a lead along with that loop using another patch, well then I've got to get out of that loop, get out of that that patch uh, and change the function to go to the next patch. So it's just a few more clicks. When I play my live gigs, I'm singing most of the time. Sometimes I'll I'll play an instrumental like you're about to hear. I'll play an instrumental piece, you know, I'll do a loop and play some lead over it, and that's pretty easy to do. But if I'm singing, like let's say I'm singing the chorus of a song, and I want to loop that last chorus that I'm singing so that when I'm done singing, I've got the loop recorded, you know, I can click so that it starts playing that and I can quickly switch patches and go over to a lead and kind of just play the guitar solo smoothly, then get out of that loop, you know, switch patches, go back to the rhythm and go right back into singing. So all that said, for me, less clicks is so much better and it just helps me do things more smoothly. So that's why I use an external looper. All right, enough of that. I'm going to let you hear this little uh, clip here. Uh, this is actually a, a kind of a small live gig that I played out in Plant City at Three, Three Hands Mead, uh, which is a really cool place. The city of Plant City is really coming up for those of you who live in that area. And it's just really cool to see their downtown area kind of exploding. But uh, this is a small gig. I'm not on any kind of stage. I'm so used to playing on stages, but I'm not on any kind of stage here. I'm just kind of in the corner. But anyway, uh, this is just a real short clip of that and you'll get to hear the two tones that I went over in the video. <music> Alright guys, I want to say thank you so much for watching this video. Please give it a like, 
give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed. Also, don't forget to check the description of this video. You guys know I've got links to my free practice guide in there for metal guitar. And I've also got two metal guitar courses out. I've got one for beginners if you're just starting out playing metal. Uh, I know this video was not about metal. And then I've got Metal Riff Master, which if you're at an intermediate level or beyond, uh, that's going to be really helpful to you. There's over 80 riffs in there. So you'll, you'll like that a lot. There's a lot of good meat and potatoes in that. Uh, so again, guys, thank you so much for watching my videos and all your support. Please leave any comments that you have in the comment section. Uh, if you have questions about the Pod Go in regards to clean tones or playing live, um, it's, it's a really great unit to play live, especially for live solo gigs. I actually use it for both uh, electric and acoustic. Actually, I play, I primarily play acoustic at my live shows. I'm playing acoustic and singing uh, 70s and 80s covers. You know, that's kind of my thing there. But I wanted to integrate electric into this somehow. I'm like, well, how how can I do this? I'm just, you know, I'm playing on my own. I'm, I'm solo up there. How can I do this? So I got into looping and I'm like, well, I need, I need a sound for my electric, but something that's going to work for both electric and acoustic. So all I have to do now when I switch guitars is just, you know, switch my wireless over to the other guitar, switch patches, and boom, I'm done. One unit for both. So it's kind of cool. Anyway, guys, now at this point, I'm just rambling. So thank you again for watching my video. You know what to do until the next one. Uh, I would say keep it metal, but today we're keeping it clean.